All right. We are in session at 2.55. Oh, my goodness. All are present. Do you know what is the readership of this? A lot. It goes out as a paper copy, but there's also a whole bunch of people that get it online. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah, most of the, to be honest with you, I think most everybody who has a mailing address in Harwich gets that. I don't know if Not it's me. Yeah. yeah, but anyway, a lot of people get I think, it. I think you do have to request it, but. Right. Okay. And it's online for anybody. Yes. Yeah. And it's yeah. also, the copies are available in the Council on Aging. So yeah. if you walk in, there's always some yeah. available. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, yeah. okay, yeah. So anyway, um, Carol Ridley? Correct. So we'll get to you. Okay. Uh, but Take there's no time. there's nobody else from the public here. So <coughs> we are done with recognizing public speakers. Um, and did everybody get the wonderful minutes from last meeting? Short and sweet. Yeah, yeah. Short and sweet. Nice yeah. bulleted here, easy. Mm -hmm. um, I have no corrections. Does anybody have any corrections? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Glenn, uh, Glenn. Charlie, do you have anything to say about the minutes? Oh, nope, they're fine. Perfect. All in favor of accepting the minutes as written? Aye. Aye. Any, Aye. Any, anybody opposed? Nobody opposed? We have passed last month's minutes. What is the date today? Today's the ninth. Okay, so that is done. Now we have Carol Ridley, a guest speaker from Pleasant Bay Alliance. Excellent. So it says, and I guess, did, well, were you Carol, the contact person? Yeah, Carol yeah. contacted me, and yeah. I, you know, put it through you. Um, I, I just thought that you might want to give us a little bit of info about your background and your connection to the particular program that you need to talk right. about. Okay, yeah. absolutely. Uh, R-I-D-L-E-Y, and there's a E on the end of Carol. Oh, yeah, how about that, huh? Good thing Glenn asked. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yes, yeah, so I, I live in Harwich, actually live in East Harwich, yeah. and um, uh, have a business called Ridley & Associates, which does a fair amount of environmental uh, resource consulting on, on the Cape. Um, and one of my long-term um, uh, projects has been working with the Pleasant Bay Alliance. Mm -hmm. and just for committee members and anyone else who's listening, um, the Pleasant Bay Alliance is an, a municipal organization formed by the four towns that share Pleasant Bay. So that's Harwich, Chatham, Orleans, and Brewster. And actually not only share Pleasant Bay, but the Pleasant Bay Watershed. So um, that was formed 20 some odd years ago to- Was that about the same time they did the ACEC? Right, yeah. yeah. So What's the ACEC, that? which is Area of Critical Environmental Concern, and that's a state mm -hmm. um, designation. That really got the ball rolling yeah. on all mm -hmm. this. That was back in the mid-80s. And um, the towns petitioned the state. The state makes this designation um, based on, it's a, it's a regulation. There's a number of 14 different factors or categories that have to be met to be designated um, that have to do with habitat quality and, and uh, various other in ecological features. And um, this, this particular ACEC, Area of Critical Environmental Concern, met all of the requirements. It's, uh, so it's really an area of um, not only our regional and town significance, but it's, it's considered a state, you know, a, an area of uh, state significance uh, for resource protection. So um, based on that ACEC designation, the towns uh, formed the alliance to put together a management plan that um, looks at you know, shoreline erosion issues. Um, we've spent a lot of time over the years working on nutrient pollution control, so all the wastewater planning that's leading to the sewering in, mm -hmm. in the various towns and other, other things that the towns are doing, fertilizer controls. Um, we've uh, uh, con collected water quality information in, in the uh, bay for more than 20 years. That's been the basis for all that wastewater planning work. Um, we have pursued a number of fisheries studies and programs. Um, we've done, most of the work we've done has been focused on watershed uh, nutrient controls 
and also shoreline protection. Um, looking at understanding and, and promoting the natural shoreline sediment processes that um, are really critical to a healthy shoreline ecosystem. So, um, and, and we, this management plan, you know, has been renewed a number of times through town meetings and it's on our website, pleasantbay.org. Um, so it's fairly broad, broad, broad and all encompassing. One of the areas that we've become increasingly active is this whole question of resilience. I mean, it's, it's, we're all paying more attention to that uh, for a variety of reasons. And it really does sync with the work we've been doing over the years, understanding shoreline processes and how to manage the desire property owners have, towns have to protect the shoreline, our town landings and beaches and private properties from the effects of erosion and sea level rise and growing storm, storm surges and things like that. So we've done a lot of work in that area. And um, a few years ago, we, uh, through grants we received from Coastal Zone Management, began a pilot project looking at um, what's called a living shoreline, which is, um, it's a combination of um, using natural uh, features like, you know, uh, salt marsh restoration, but blending that with a hard feature uh, that might be um, a shell reef or something like that to provide layers of protection from uh, erosion. It's a new form of, of, or a new strategy that isn't really, uh, doesn't really have a clear regulatory pathway at, through DEP, so we're doing this pilot project. We have this going on at um, the Jackknife Landing in Chatham. So, what, what part of Jackknife are you? Right, so you drive down yep. the, the road, and just as you're driving in on the left, there's that strip of, of marsh that's really eroded quite a mm -hmm. bit over the last few years, largely because that area gets so much use, but also you've got a lot of current coming through there from, from the, bridge. the bridge. Right. <laughs> so we're we're looking at actually an installation that would be to would we build that marsh edge. But also, um, we're working with ribbed muscle on coir bags that would be installed in that edge of the marsh to provide some, mm -hmm. you know, stability, and then have the marsh hopefully grow around that. Um, so that's a kind of an innovative project that we've been working on for a number of years now, um, and it's still in the permitting phase. In fact, it just uh, yeah, went through. What did you call that? What, what's the living the, shoreline? Living shoreline. Right. Right. What were you using? Mussels? Are you saying? Right. So these are um, quar ribbed. bags, like coconut fiber bags, and they're and ribbed mussels. And and the theory there is you don't want um, you don't want a species that is going to be harvested by people, and also you know you want something fairly hardy um, that's not you know uh, that can resist predation and um, can can you know kind of maintain itself. So, um, Carol? yes, Carol, uh, we, I, I launched kayaks in that area right there. Will that I impact the kayak launch from there if you're going to head up That's upstream? Plenty of room. You know, what the, the town of Chatham is actually undertaking a master planning of that whole area. Um, there's no, there's no plan to, to stop people from accessing to go kayaking or even to go to the beach there or anything else. It's a landing and a beach and, and that will continue. The town of Chatham is looking at ways to organize the parking and really just keep people off the marsh. That's kind of a key thing. And one of the things that maybe you noticed, and, and you know, there are now big rocks and blocks of concrete down there, so that people were backing their trucks up to that landing area right near the bridge mm -hmm. to just drop the kayaks right there. Well, that was causing all kinds of ruts and, and yeah. erosion along that bank. It's right there. Yeah. Yeah. So we're just, we want people to enjoy the area, but not drive their vehicles on the marsh and, and you know, in close to the bank. I think what they need to do is bring in a, a bunch of dirt or fill because at high tide, a lot of the vehicles are all uh, almost underwater and sometimes and you have to park way on the, on yeah, the right side. sea level them. rise. Yeah, well, and part, <laughs> part, of, part of the plan will be to do some additional fill on that area. So that's, that's all you know, under discussion and being permitted right now. Um, so, um, so yeah, absolutely. And so this work, this project, which, which really is sort of a segue to, to what I really wanted to share with you. So we've been looking at 
sea level rise and you know different ways to protect the shoreline you know that are nature based and really allow the natural uh, process of the estuary to continue. That's part of what we're when we think of resilience for Pleasant Bay. We think of maintaining access to our landings and beaches and all of that, which is vitally important. But we also want the estuary to continue to function as an estuary and not lose our salt marsh habitat and and all of those kinds of functions and all of our eelgrass. So we, um, building on this work that took place over a number of years, we, we wrote a grant to the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program, which is that wonderful yeah. state program that's available to our towns, um, and uh, applied to develop a climate adaptation action plan for Pleasant Bay. And um, we were lucky enough to receive funding in just under $300,000 um, over two years to do the, to develop this plan and it has a number of different pieces so one piece is we're working with the Center for Coastal Studies to um, first of all um, assess the vulnerability of our barrier beach which provides a lot of protection to the Pleasant Bay estuary at that whole Nauset mm -hmm. barrier beach and uh, so they're doing some work uh, to help us understand you know how, how stable that barrier beach is over the next couple of decades um, they're also doing a storm tide pathways analysis, which is kind of a bathtub analysis of low-lying areas along the sh inner shoreline and how those might flood under different storm conditions so we know where, um, where there might be some vulnerable properties that need to be, you know, considered for resilience planning. Um, and they're also doing some additional analysis on fetch, which is that, you know, the, the um, the easiest way to describe this just you know the the force of water over over a space of of water surface that develops so it has to it affects you know storm surge and, and damage that can happen with waves and so forth so they're doing that piece uh, yes you know i'm down here in florida and everybody down here is building a new house building it up high on stilts and they put the dirt underneath it before they even put the uh pile drive the struts on underneath it they need to have some kind of a building codes that and, and tell anybody to do any modifications in any of the houses that are near the water that they have to be raised up or something to, to get them to be, be adjusted for it. I don't know that we have that many spots on Pleasant Bay to that would accommodate new construction. We have a lot of grandfathered in. I'm talking about rebuilds. Right. So, um, yeah, there is uh, a lot of, uh, of tension. We're not looking at a floodplain uh, bylaw, but I know that is an area that's getting a lot of attention by the Cape Cod Commission, some of our towns, looking at what the regulations are that, you know, limit or restrict building or redevelopment within the floodplain like that, where, where it's, you know, going to be facing some, some serious flooding conditions. And, and I believe there are some provisions for elevating structures um, that but isn't it's not part of your. It's not project, within the scope okay. of what we're doing, yeah. right? So, but we are looking at um, a couple of types of infrastructure that we think maybe aren't getting enough attention. One is, um, you know, wa our water access locations. So we want to make sure that we're um, understanding where the vulnerabilities are with our with our town landings and beaches. Um, there are about twenty some odd public access spaces in the Pleasant Bay system. Um, we're also looking at, at um, sort of water protection infrastructure, and by that I mean things like stormwater drains, sewer pumping stations, water mains. You know, that's the kind of thing we don't think about necessarily when we think about sea level rise and coastal resilience, but to the extent that you have those pieces of infrastructure that are low lying, they could be vulnerable mm -hmm. to of elevations of groundwater mm -hmm. or, you know, um, surface effects. So we're looking at those. So we have Wright Pierce, which is an engineering firm working with us. R-I-G-H-T or? Um, R-I-G-H-T, right, Pierce, P-I-E-E, P-I-E-R-C-E. -E. Um, engineering. Engineering, right. Um, and they are helping us assess. And, and so they've done a survey of vulnerable um, access points and um, infrastructure in each of our four member towns and have identified a couple in each town that they're gonna actually develop some, some resilience plans for, concept plans for. So in Harwich, the two facilities that have been identified are um, a pumping station, a sewer pumping station on Harding Lane, and um, water mains that are located at the intersection of Route 28 and Pleasant, and excuse me, Bay Road. So um, 
they're going to look at that infrastructure and think of some ways that um, could the, that infrastructure could be made more resilient to potential effects of sea level what rise. What remains were those on t uh, Route 28 and Bay Road? And what was the other one? Pumping station. Pumping station on Harden Lane. Harden. Right. Which is off of Church Street. Okay. Um, so this is all, you know, kind of in the Muddy Creek uh, subwatershed. Um, so they're going to be developing some resilience concepts for that infrastructure. Then the third piece that's really exciting is we're working with the Cape Cod Commission, excuse me, uh, Cape Cod National Seashore, um, on some exciting science that they're developing um, on salt marsh resilience and eelgrass resilience. So they're doing some really um, cutting edge work to identify where those resources are vulnerable and among those areas where the potential is greatest for uh, management actions that could, could protect or restore those resources. You know, some of them may just be lost, um, just given certain sure. conditions. May not be anything we can do. Mm -hmm. But there might be other areas where we can take some management actions to pr prolong the life of those resources or protect them in other ways or, or help them to regenerate. So um, they're, they're working with us on that, on that particular topic. And the fourth piece of this work is really to bring this information to the public. So that's part of why I wanted to talk right, with you right, today. Right. Because you know, it's all great for us to talk about this stuff in a meeting, <laughs> but you know, that's not gonna do anybody any good. We really, this first year is pulling the, these pieces together. The second year, which will start after June 30th, is the engagement part, bringing this out and having a conversation so that the community understands what the vulnerabilities are, where the risks are, what the options are, and helps to fact filter it out like, well, what do we want to do about this? Because all of this takes either you know, local regulatory changes or um, investments in improvements uh, to enhance resilience. Um, and those are, all, those are all public decisions you know, that citizens need to be aware of and, and participate in in setting priorities and mm -hmm. you know getting behind these measures if if they deem them um, in in the community's interest so my, as a first step of outreach i'm reaching out to the different energy and climate, climate action change. committees in, yeah. in each of our communities i think brewster is just getting a group like this off the ground but i've met with uh, orleans and chatham mm -hmm. yeah chatham is is <laughs> they're moving along. They're very yeah. interested in salt marsh restoration as a, mm -hmm. as a topic. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I, I want you to be aware of this and, you know, we'd like to work with you and, and have you be part of that engagement mm -hmm. process when we're ready to kind of make some presentations, which we'd like to think, it's not formal, but formally decided, but we, we, we're kind of targeting to have something in the summertime when we might get out with some initial findings. Because then you'll like reach the summer people. Right, and, uh, yeah, and that's what people are thinking a lot a about lot this. A lot of people that live yeah. in Pleasant Bay are right. the summer people. Right, yeah. right. So we'd like to do maybe, um, we, we're, we're thinking about a different, a, a bunch of different things we might do, um, either doing it virtually or maybe some in person or a combination of the two. We're also working closely with the Cape Cod Commission because you may be aware they're doing that low roads yep. assessment yep. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. right about the same time and we don't want to have our public meeting and then right. they have another public right. meeting about very much the same and we don't want to duplicate either mm -hmm. right and Harwich was not included in, in the first go round we got low roads though I mean we we have yeah, a, yeah. Are you you're in the second round? There's yeah. a second yeah. round. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think it's Harwich yeah. and Chatham are in yeah. the second round. Yeah, because I, I remember seeing the, the the outline of some presentation that Christy yeah. did. Yep. And I thought, well, how come Harwich? We did. <laughs> we, we eventually got it. And, yeah. And they and identified a couple of. Can roads. I ask you a question? Sure. Have you looked into dunes and sand? Well, yes. Yeah. So, um, as as a strategy for rest, yes. Yeah. So, absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. You know. Beach nourishment, dune mm -hmm. restoration is mm -hmm. an important strategy. Mm -hmm. So that'll be maybe something that, um, I guess another piece of that first task I was talking about with Center for Coastal Studies and another person involved in that team is Greg Berman, who is the Coastal Resource Specialist for the uh, county. Mm -hmm. And he's helping us come up with guidelines that homeowners um, can use to protect their property. And that includes things like 
you know, restoring to keeping dunes healthy, mm -hmm. replenishing sand where yeah, that makes sense. Have you been out on Pleasant Bay much? No. No. The Pleasant Bay doesn't have a lot of dunes or a lot of beaches. No, I'm thinking of yeah. Nosset Beach. Right. Well, yeah, it's so critical. Beach. Yeah, it uh, is. And the, the thing, you know, not to digress or mm -hmm. anything, the thing that you have to keep in mind about, I work for Cape Cod National Seashore, mm -hmm. so, you know, I've been steeped in this. Place. Right, right. Mm -hmm. um, the barrier beach that's out there, the Nosset Beach, if you think of that long, long, mm. long, long, long strip of, mm -hmm. of it belongs to Cape Cod National Seashore. Mm. I know. Mm -hmm. And the best thing you can do for it is to leave it alone. <laughs> really? Do not touch it. Let it do its thing. That is the best management strategy you can do. And which is why Nobody has beach shacks out there anymore. And what is, the what, is the, what is the rationale? What is the rationale for? Because it's a natural system, and the natural processes that mm -hmm. move sand up and down a natural system should be allowed to function. Mm -hmm. It's if you start to block sand anywhere, mm -hmm. you start to perturb the system, mm -hmm. and you there are many unknown. Mm -hmm. issues that are going to mm -hmm. crop up. Mm -hmm. You go to Red River Beach, mm -hmm. we have a series of groins there that mm -hmm. literally go all the way up to mm -hmm. Yarmouth, yeah. you know. What's a groin? groin? When you have a beach, you know, if this There's is... one rocks. And then you have the, oh. those big rock things that stick oh. out in the water. Jetties. Mm -hmm. They're jetties. Yeah. Oh. They're, technically, they're groins. A jetty only protects the opening to a harbor. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> oh, I used to teach I never heard the term groin before in that yeah. sense, so okay, I, I learned to, something new. I used to have today. to teach this to high school students. Can you, you imagine going to, me saying, are you going to now we're going to study groin. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I didn't bring any cards with me, but I can yeah. certainly give you my but contact anyway, so the, the, point, the point being is that when you have a natural system that's working, you stay out of it. Right, you let it function, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's why Cape Cod National Seashore is so important for the outer beach because mm -hmm. we do not get in the way of that system. Mm -hmm. We just let it do its thing. Mm -hmm. Behind the barrier beach, where we have tons and tons of human structures and activities, which is what you're talking mm -hmm. about, how do we balance access to this resource mm -hmm. with not loving it to death, which is what we're doing to many of our natural bodies. Of well, I, I, I think what you're saying yeah. makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Makes me pause. Yeah. But I think of the Dutch people. <laughs> they do all kinds of things. Because and they're, they're, they're not letting any of the natural things happen there. They have complete, they, they, they said, no control, more nature. Control, control, control. <laughs> Nature's gone. We do not do anything according to nature. We are going to engineer our way out of this, mm. which for them, that's, that's their choice. Mm. That was their way of creating the land. Yeah, Ooh. that was their way, of, you know. We are, not going to, we are not going to engineer our way out of this, which mm. is why adaptation mm. is oftentimes associated with retreat, mm. Mm -hmm. that's which should be part yeah. of any adaptation yeah. strategy. Yeah. Mm. It's like the town of Orleans, you know, at Nosset mm. Beach, Orleans. Mm -hmm. They're retreating. Mm. They they they've moved several mm -hmm. structures. They're getting re they've mm -hmm. moved their harbor master from the beach mm -hmm. to up the hill, mm -hmm. and they had that planned for years because mm -hmm. they saw the writing on the wall. They saw that that mm -hmm. beach moves. There is a yeah. um, there is a um, and this is kind of semi-untested in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. It's actually been um, more successful in Rhode Island, but um, another strategy is where there is low-lying marsh mm -hmm. to um, uh, place additional material on that marsh to help it Accre re yeah. regain elevation. Yeah. 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 Um, Particularly and, if you've got sea level rising faster than it's able to right. keep up. Right, and you know, marshes, marshes grow uh, in part by sediment sort of settling in mm -hmm. on you know getting caught in the in the vegetation and settling down but they also grow from from underneath the biomass mm -hmm. the root systems keep building on themselves mm -hmm. um, and that's how marshes tend to keep up but sometimes they don't keep up with sea level rise and there isn't enough natural sediment right. filtering in mm -hmm. that you can try to help the process along mm -hmm. a little bit and so that is a strategy that we are looking at in some mm -hmm. areas mm -hmm. and again there's, there, you know, DEP is really just putting a toe in the water on that. They're really mm -hmm. concerned about, you know, mm -hmm. you know, fiddling with nature, really. Right, right. Um, the, the park so. has done some experimentation with the adding sand 
to some of the right. margins. Before you go any further, I would like to invite you to attend the Harwood Climate Change Network mm -hmm. uh, event that is going to take place on April 21st. Okay. Uh, and it's going to be on water and uh, the value of uh, maintaining septic systems. And the speech is going to be delivered by Andrew Gottlieb. Oh, great. Sure. Is it a Zoom or is it going to be in person? In person, it's going to be. At 204. Oh, down to a Can yes. I get your, your email address? Sure, absolutely. By the way, I realize we didn't introduce ourselves. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> you know me, I'm Roseanne. Yes. Right. Glenn Mimic. Glenn. And this is Jacqueline Pence Green. And I'm a member of the uh, HCAN also. Okay, so, great. Uh, yeah, we would love to have you. Sure. Because you were, you, you're, you're in. My son just uh, bought a house in South Orle Orleans. Mm -hmm. South Orleans, sure. Yes. On uh, Lake Drive. Oh, so yes. So I'm yep. very interested in knowing okay. everything about Orleans. Orleans has okay. most of the shoreline and Chatham. You know, yeah. We have yeah. a little bit, and Bruce yeah. has this much. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So I'm so Valerie so Bell. Yeah. So the four towns yeah. are Brewster, Harwich, Chatham, Orleans. And Orleans. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They, they, they're the ones that are make up the, the abutting neighbors to the mm -hmm. Pleasant Bay. Mm -hmm. Now, so I, I'm curious, we talked about earlier about a little bit of damage from people putting in kayaks. Now, when Harwich puts out their list of beaches and parking spots and whatnot, I believe that we have 10 at the most. I think the norm might be less than 10. At Pleasant Bay, you mean? Yes. Yeah, it's very small. It, yeah. it's, it's very but Jackknife does it. You don't need a sticker to park there. And, I'm talking about right along the edge of the road. Right, that's, yeah. that's you don't need a sticker you, for that. You do need right. a sticker oh, for that. Sticker yeah, for you that. need okay. a sticker for the road parking, but if and you then, go up and down, okay. you don't need a sticker for that. Okay. Now, where are you yeah. seeing most of the damage? Is it where is it off just right off the edge of the road, or is it when you drive in the up and down part? So, so, so the there's the part at the head of the bay. Yeah. Uh, that's in Harwich, and then the other part is actually technically in Chatham, Chatham. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So you go down that steep road, you go up the hill, over the bridge, up yep. the hill, and then you go down that steep turn okay. to the left. Okay, so that's Jackknife. That's actually a, okay. a chat. That's town of Chatham. Okay. And if you go right at, as you get to the bottom of that hill, and you're just the beaches in front of you, um, to your left is kind of like um, you go back a little bit, and that's where people put in mm -hmm. their kayaks. And, and all the people from Chatham. Nope. No, anyone can anyone go there. Can yeah, go. that's one of the few places okay. that Chatham does not require you to be a Chatham resident okay. to access the beach. It's a it's considered a rural beach. There's no lifeguard. Right. It's also a mooring field. So people have, you know, pull up their right. sunfish Boats, or their yeah. what have you up. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, they've got, and that's why they got some CPC money together, and the town is doing a master planning of that area because gets it use. gets a lot of use in the summer. If you drive by there, I mean, it's just lines of cars down there. It's really yeah. heavily used. The, the yeah. good news about, which I've always been very impressed with the town of Orleans, is they let anybody use their uh, boat launches without a sticker. You know, so, so the like, Route 28 South South yeah. Orleans Landing, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yep. For, further up the bay a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's a similar yep. situation. Or like I, when I do kayak trips for the park, mm -hmm. I launch out a meeting house pond, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and I can use it and, and, and my visitors can park there without having to have a, mm -hmm. a sticker. But anyway. But you have to park away from the beach. You can't park near the beach. You gotta park up on the access road to it. Where are you talking about, Charlie? In Orleans there. I parked at like a meeting house road there. Oh no, you can park anywhere. Just can't block the driveways of the people that live there. <laughs> That, that's well, the only caveat. I was told you can't park right close because you need a permit. You need a, a beach permit for, for right close to the water. Not at Meeting House. Not at Meeting House. But anyway, we digress. And, yeah. and, um, and my, yeah. my second question is, this pertains strictly to Pleasant Bay, correct? This plan, yes. Okay, and how do they uh, set up the boundaries of, of Pleasant Bay? I mean. Is it north of such and such a point, south of such and such a point? How do you define Pleasant Bay geographically? Right, so good question. Um, so the area of critical environmental concern does have an actual boundary, right? Okay. Um, Pleasant Bay, really, when you think, when we think of our planning area, we think of basically everything, uh, you know, sort of north of the original inlet across from the lighthouse, right? So that's Chatham Harbor until you get to like, say, Nickerson Neck. Okay. Um, 
where the golf course is. Um, that's that's technically Chatham Harbor, but those in the the new 2007 inlets right there. So that's really an area that affects the health of Pleasant Bay because that's where the water's coming in and out. So from planning purposes, we include that area, but the bay itself is is technically from that that point um, at Nickerson Neck uh, north to Meeting House Pond in Orleans. That's really all the estuary. Um, and which is Big Pleasant Bay and Little Pleasant Bay, right. and there's tons of these little embayments all over right. the edges of it. Right. It's about 7,000 acres of water. Um, and then our planning also includes the watershed, mm. which is about 21,000 acres. And, you know, like, as Valerie mentioned, Brewster has like 40 feet of shoreline. It's, it's all the Pleasant Bay Community Boating mm -hmm. property. Um, but they have slightly more watershed than Harwich has, even though we have, you yeah. know, more shoreline. And what happens in the watershed obviously has a lot to do with the health of the bay. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. that's why all towns are, are part of this four town effort. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Yeah. And you provided to me a lot of really good information because I know nothing about this. Great. And I know the whole idea yeah. for you to come here is because you want to get the word out to people. Right. So I'm going to ask you, please. Yep. I'm not going to do justice with my minutes with my yep. chicken scratching. So the bullets that you provide with us today, yep. I'll give you my email address afterwards. I want sure. to make sure I get it in correctly in okay. the minutes. Okay. So people who go on the, our, uh, the town's website and looks at the minutes, they'll get it rolled out properly. Fantastic. I'm happy to do that. Thank Great. You. I am, I am not a scientist at all, and mm -hmm. I don't know anything about this stuff. What is the de definition of a watershed as opposed to mm -hmm. a particular body of water? So a watershed is essentially um, the land uh, that, that drains or contributes to that water body. Mm -hmm. So like every, every bit of water that goes into you know, uh, the land on the watershed gets to the groundwater, and it basically travels underground toward another wa that water body mm -hmm. and there can be stops along the way so like it, it, it's it gets a little complicated and above <laughs> my pay grade but um, you know you'll have a watershed that'll have say ponds in it right mm -hmm. and then the ponds will be interceptors I mean so if you think about we think about nitrogen traveling under the groundwater toward the estuary mm -hmm. then it hits a pond the pond takes some uh, some of that up it you know it attenuates is the technical term that nitrogen. So it's basically the recharge area. Mm -hmm. All of the water, you, know, you water your lawn, rains, whatever filters through the ground, mm -hmm. gets to the groundwater, and it moves toward that body of water. And, and wa watersheds are defined by topography or the shape of the land. Mm -hmm. So if you think about a mountain, one side of the mountain will be one watershed, the other side of the mountain will be another watershed. You know, so if a raindrop falls on the mountain it's either going to flow this way or it's going to flow that way and yeah. it's it's the shape of the land that determines where that water is flowing there are great maps online of the watersheds for cape cod mm -hmm. um, and and actually pleasant bay's watershed is divided up into you know sub, many many yeah. sub watersheds yeah. that yeah. you know each of like round cove and harwich yeah. has its own watershed mm -hmm. muddy creek has two sub watersheds mm -hmm. that are all part of this so it gets divided up and even further than that mm -hmm. so it yeah, yeah. Okay. but the, you get the idea yeah, get yeah. The idea. yeah. yeah. It, Water flows yeah. downhill, so right, you know. right, <laughs> and and that's important because what an estuary is is where fresh water comes into an estu a, a coastal system. Mm -hmm. So uh, runoff or or you know inflows of groundwater um, affect the health of the estuary. So if there's stuff in there like nitrogen, too much nitrogen, it's going to get in there and it's going to you know pollute the the coastal system. And I think system. what I find is that a lot of people get confused when they come to Cape Cod because they go to some place like Delaware or Maryland, and, and when you talk about like the Chesapeake Bay mm -hmm. estuary, it's a river coming into the ocean. And if you look up the term estuary, it often will say where a river meets the sea. Yeah. And so they come to Cape Cod and they say, there's no rivers here, right. you know, like, but it's, it's our groundwater. Right. You know, that is providing that fresh water. Fresh water. You can't yeah. see it, but it's there, yeah. mm -hmm. you know. So mm -hmm. that gets a little confusing to visitors okay. too. Okay, thank you. Yeah, now, as far as like outreach goes, mm -hmm. um, I had a couple of questions. Great. Uh, definitely, we're very interested in helping get any kind of this information out. Mm -hmm. um, 
had like these studies and things that you're having done and the, yeah. and the results of those, are they going to be made public? Like, you, do you have a website? Do you have a place where this will reside if somebody wanted to look at it? Right, good question. We have a website. So Pleasant, if you go to pleasantbay.org, mm -hmm. that we just actually had yeah. it redone, it's, it's, that's where we have um, a lot of studies on a lot of different topics right, right. there. Mm -hmm. So um, we haven't really figured out the, the format, but we have you know, a, a climate adaptation page, but we need to think a little bit more about how we're going to organize right. that. But yes, the answer is yes to mm -hmm. your question. Um, we want to make all of this information available, and our website will certainly be one of the places, and we're happy to link to other websites, um, right, right. you know, that might have similar interests. Now, um, how much communication have you had with the town itself? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. So <laughs> the the so um, the Harwich has different people on staff who are assigned to work. Um, so Dan Pelletier is uh, mm -hmm. very heavily involved. Yeah. Um, Amy and Melissa from conservation mm -hmm. are involved. Heinz Proft is always you know regular mm -hmm. attendee at our meetings. Um, you know, on selected issues, John Rendon is is involved. Um, so you know, we have that. Um, ongoing. Plus, we have two uh, appointees. The select board's appointed Alan Thompson and Dolly Howell as our steering committee representatives from Harwich. So, so it is it is a town Good. sponsored. Yeah. The, the town, group. town yes. knows what's going on. Absolutely, and, uh, yeah. is supporting it and right. mm -hmm. that type of thing. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I will. You know, it, it, it's interesting. Um, you know, it's it's a kind of work that's been going on. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you go by. Herring River, they actually have shovels in the ground, mm -hmm. finally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> very exciting. On the very ground, exciting, yep. Very exciting. Clearing and and yep. uh, that's going to, you know, the Herring River restoration in Wellfleet, biggest salt marsh restoration mm -hmm. on the East Coast, mm -hmm. has finally, it's been, it's been in the planning stages for over 30 years. Yeah. What are they actually doing? Boy. Um, the Herring River in Wellfleet <laughs> used to flow from... Cape Cod Bay, mm -hmm. up past where Route 6 is now, mm -hmm. almost to the ocean on the other mm -hmm. side. And it was a huge salt marsh, huge. Yeah. And in 1908 or 9, nine uh, they decided there were too many mosquitoes. And so they convinced the town to put a dike and block tidal flow up into the marsh. Sounded like a good idea at the time, apparently. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, you know, they got rid of all the saltwater mosquitoes, which were immediately really replaced by freshwater mosquitoes. So was, there was no net change in mosquitoes. But, and it totally destroyed the marsh. Mm -hmm. uh, they goodness. lost the herring industry, they lost the shellfishing industry, uh, and oh created a, a very, very sick and very polluted backwater. So, hence, they want to restore it. And uh, it's long time planning. These things do take a long time. It, the, the, you're always, you always have an abutter. There's always somebody there that is, you know, the NIMBY. You know, they, they're concerned. I have a very dear friend in Wellfleet who, yeah. who is one of those people. Yeah, they're, because everybody, you know, rightly so, mm -hmm. you know, if you're putting up a, you know, a mussel reef or you're restoring a salt marsh, or whatever you're doing, somebody somewhere is going to get impacted in a way that, they don't want to be. Yeah. Um, and, you know, part of the 30 years was dealing with everybody to make everybody whole mm -hmm. so that this could happen. And, and, yeah. and, and, and as often happens yeah. with a project, you know, yeah. in, in big change, often just people yeah. just don't like change. But, you know, there's yeah. also that opportunity for a lot of misinformation, which, which was it part of the challenge, the yeah. Yeah. you know, with that project is, is just addressing this information and, and helping people understand yes. how it was actually going to happen. They did a lot was of outreach. Yeah. Isn't there an issue about flooding? Well, so I think that's a concern, but, but the project, so the, the structure that, that Valerie's referencing is, is going to be, it, so there's a dike with some very small undersized culverts that are broken and, and a lot of problems with that. But... Um, that's going to be replaced with a bridge that has a series of 16 panels and tide gates that are going to be adjusted. So this is going to be very heavily regulated and monitored. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not like they're going to um, open yeah. it up and say, oh, well. Yeah. And, and there's been extensive, extensive yeah. assessment of what, you know, where water levels can go and what that might affect. And, mm -hmm. 
it, to the extent that any structures are affected, those are addressed. Um, yes. So who's actually going to control that? Cape Cod I mean, Commission? Is it, is it being operated by somebody from the town of Wellfleet? There's a... Is it the DEP? Everybody's involved, but, but there I is... I mean, you are just talking about operating... So the, so, so the, so the, so the bridge is actually... The bridge will be owned by the town of Wellfleet. Yep. Um, but it's... All, the whole project is being undertaken by the Cape Cod National Seashore and the town in partnership. They formed, through a memorandum of agreement, uh, an executive council that will make decisions about um, tide gate management. That's going to be the Hello. body. So that's going to be three Hello, members Charlie. from the town and two members yeah. from the hey, seashore. You're back. Um, who will be making okay, those good. decisions about regulating tides. And they will be informed by science that's generated by the Cape Cod National Seashore, by U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, by USGS. The Division of Ecological Restoration. There's a whole yeah. technical team that's providing feed, you know, input. But, but to who that is actually going to be controlling the gates? That's probably 20 years from now. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, and it probably the town, but with, I got again in partnership because the Cape Cod National Seashore owns Great Island in that area, a lot of the land in there, mm -hmm. and as does Wellfleet own land in there, and so the two of them together. This is a project that's going to take like. I will never see the end of it, I don't think. No, um, <laughs> uh, I mean, I think, so So with the bridge construction. That'll uh, go quick. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and then um, the first, the, the executive council has selected the first three-year tide gate policy. So so the, the um, it, you know, who will actually physically lift the gates? That, that could be the town of Wellfleet staff or, or they could contract it. might just be scientists yeah. at this point, right. you know, because it'll be collecting data for a long time. And they probably turn it over to the park or some agency that will manipulate the gate and collect the data, you know, to, to figure it out. Very similar to, you know, when you put in, like she's talking about the, the mussel reef and the grass, somebody has to monitor that. You know, and somebody has to, you know, so that's all part of what gets built into the to the grants and to that type of Monitoring thing. Monitoring is key. And yeah. it's good to have the public outreach because mm -hmm. you want p as many people as possible, you know, you probably want to have a sign there explaining what's going on. Yes, you there know, actually will be a sign. Like a wayside, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. so, yeah. Um, which we, good you know, point. a lot of waysides go yeah. up so people can say what's going on and then there's something that tells you what's going right. on. Right, you know, right, right. So so, um, so I, I know you've got other items yeah. on your agenda, but I just I really yeah, appreciate well, this exciting. opportunity to yeah. talk with you. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you we'll, already have a connection. With yeah, the, we'll yeah. we'll talk more about the yeah. the Climate Action Network, and um, you know just keep the conversation going. Mm -hmm. And as we get you know a little fur further along with some of the analysis we're doing, mm -hmm. we want to come back and absolutely and let you know when we want to take that public and, and work with you to yep. kind of structure yep. that. Yeah, so, so very okay. good, great, very exciting. Great. So so who's going to do the actual putting in of the, the rib muscles? You know, if you is it going to be the town? Is it going to be a contractor? So the town, yes. Yeah. So what's going to happen is as the project goes through permitting, um, part of that scope of work will include the, the development of bid documents. So the bid documents will describe the work that the town, the town of that, at that point the project becomes the town of Chatham's project okay. because it is the town's land and, and okay. they will own, so own it. So this is sufficient. I mean, this is not a tiny project. This has actually got some legs. It's a pretty, it's yeah. It's going to cost fifty, hundred thousand dollars. It's more. yeah. I mean, we don't have the estimate right. of cost yet, but it's going to be yeah in that the range. The only probably. reason I'm asking is yeah. I have I have a nephew who down in Florida did exactly the same mm -hmm. thing to get his Eagle Scout badge. Oh, nothing <laughs> to the scale that oh, you yeah. just yeah. described. Yeah, yeah, obviously. But you know, I always look for opportunities where you can utilize local talent sure. and reach out to somebody like yeah. the local Boy Scouts because if a can get his eagle badge and do something really productive like that, right. but you're talking about a, a much larger. Yeah, project. no, this will be a professionally yeah, installed. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Why aren't the muscles edible? Uh, they're very sulfury. If you've ever opened a ribbed mussel, they're like bright yellow inside. And well, the people do eat them. I mean, they, it's not, they're not poison. I know them. Yeah. My father loved them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there, there are people that do harvest them, but they are not the mussels that you get when you order they're, mussels like at a restaurant. Those are the blue strong. mussels. Yeah. yeah, it's almost iod only. Uh, yeah. So, but you know, it's it's it, you know, I guess people eat anything. But uh, but anyway, yeah. So we're we're very excited. Great. Excellent. Um, I, we will definitely keep track of the website Good. and um, Good. you know if Thank you. you would like us to you know just 
show up at a meeting or something as in solidarity for anything that yep. you, you need to do, you know, let us know. Okay, and, great. Uh, we great. Can, we can thank do that. Thank you for contacting me. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, thank you for helping to make this happen, yeah. Roseanne. I mean, Roseanne's really. our person. Yeah, yeah definitely. Manager. So yeah. is that the best way to, to stay in touch through Roseanne? Yeah, uh, Roseanne has sort of been our sort of point person for a lot of this. And um, I'm... I'm I function as a connector in many ways. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, a good, really, that's a good thing yeah. to be. And I used to make jewelry, which is part of my connector. There you go. Thing. Not these. But. And I, I'm the chair only because I was the last man standing. When the, you know, <laughs> you didn't attend that meeting, right? <laughs> <laughs> Note to self. Um, but I also work half the year. You know, so I work for Cape Cod National Seashore from May to October, and so it's good to have other, you know, my, my committee people have been very good at sort of picking up, you know, some Great. of the duties, and having Roseanne do sort of this connection stuff is Great. Okay. excellent. Perfect. Yeah. She keeps us well appraised of what's going on. Well, I know I sent an email, yeah. and like uh, yeah. a day later, I was already yeah. scheduled, so that yeah. worked out perfectly. She so. also is in charge of the agenda, so she's oh, the person. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. The power. I hope you're able to get through the drawer. <laughs> thank you so well, much. Well, thank you. Great to meet nice you, meeting. and yes. great to see you, and yes. uh, look forward to yeah. further conversation, and I will be in touch with you. And I'm and super happy you're doing something about erosion, yeah. seashore erosion, because this is what worries me the most here. We, oh, yeah. we all should be worried about it. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. great. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Thank Have a good you. rest of the meeting. Bye-bye. I, I, I found this article that announced... This is um, Governor Baker announces oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. for several yep. Cape Towns. Yeah, yep. and I, yep. I kept it, and yep. I thought, that's it. Yep. Yeah, we Because we had talked about that briefly a while back um, mm -hmm. when, it, when it first came out. Yep. All right, so it's always good to partner with other groups that are doing good work. Fantastic, um, my goodness. Don't reinvent the wheel. Don't reinvent the wheel, and you know, yeah. if we're supportive of other organizations, they'll be supportive of us. Um, I don't have a lot to say about the the energy thing on Tuesday. I think it went as well as expected. Can I? And can I? Oh, 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 yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. I, I thought you were going. Oh, no, I just. No, yeah. we're, I'm going. In, I'm on old business now. Yeah, yeah. I have a, a couple of things that that came to me from one of the people who attended. Mm -hmm. um, were you were you wanting to stay in touch with people who attended the program? I had. You know, I thought about that, and it's like, like but, but to what end, really? You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not like we're trying to, it's not like we're an organization trying to build members. You know, we, okay. we're, we have five members, and that's what we've been allocated. Right. Uh, so I'm, I'm not looking for that. But what I did think about, unfortunately too late for Tuesday, um, is I think I'm going to have some paper and pencils, and I'm going to, pens, and I'm going to have people have an opportunity to write questions down. Yeah. Um, so that the next time we meet, maybe the beginning of the the next session, we'll just be answering people's questions to the best of our ability because it will give us time to look things up and uh, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. type of thing. Um, I think you know instead of taking down people's names, uh, we can just remind them that we have a public speaking part of our agenda every month, and that if they did have a question or wanted to come mm -hmm. to us. Um, I hesitate to put my personal phone and email out yeah. there because yeah. I don't want to get slammed with mm -hmm. every time somebody gets a electric bill they don't like. I don't. <laughs> I don't want to hear about it. You know. But Valerie, you said. <laughs> Valerie, how many people were there? About uh, five. Yeah, five. Yeah. Oh, I mean, and us. And then us too, but. Um, yeah, exactly. but we had some great questions and mm -hmm. some, you know, good participation. Good yes. participation from the people that were there. They were they got into it, and um, uh, I think, you know, and it's the kind of thing you you can't just you're not just one and done. I mean, I think that this could be like an annual thing, you know, like to That's help people, idea. you know, because people, you know, you hit new people, mm -hmm. new new issues come mm -hmm. up, mm -hmm. um, and you get the pulse of the people, and you get the pulse of the mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. You know, um, you said you were going to bring your own projector. Would that next time? Would that something was wrong with their projector? Well, yeah, yeah. but but it was that, obvious. <laughs> yeah, would that have any um, impact on the way the room was set up? Not really. I mean, you can set the room up any way you want. Yeah, because yeah. the screen is on that one wall. So I mean, we we would have to, you know, you would have to have the you still have to have the chairs facing the screen. Right. Um, right. But we could. 
now that we have the lay of the land, we we could fiddle with that next time. Do and they have a television? There? I would assume it's somewhere in that community center. Why there. do we need a television? The only reason I'm throwing that out there is I believe, you know, you learn things from your kids, right? Nowadays, well, of course. <laughs> I, my kid, all of a sudden, I'm finding out he's watching uh, things uh, from uh, YouTube on my TV. And I'm like, what the? And he's casting it from his phone. Right, yeah. So, so your PowerPoint presentation, right. you, you could pull up on your phone the, and the, cast it to the TV. Yeah, and then yeah. The, 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 problem, the, 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 the problem with the, was the projector was, was not Bad. functional. Yeah, right. And um, I didn't know that. I have a projector. I just didn't bring it because I. Don't. They told me they had one. It wasn't that bad. I could read yeah. everything yeah. you put but, up. So anyway, I'm bringing a better projector next time. Yeah. Um, I've already been in touch with Stephen from Cape Light Compact, and he's he's gave me a preview of what he's going to talk about. It. Yeah. It'll be fine. Okay. Um, my other question mm -hmm. is, um, do we have to attend every session? No. The no. No. Because I have seen that Cape Light. Yeah. Yeah. I've yeah. seen the presentation, yeah. Yeah. and I have a commitment. Every Tuesday afternoon, and it's like, oh. yeah, yeah, no. I, I would go to your commitment and then come back for the for the climate change thing and and Julie and see her, but you oh, don't yeah. have you don't have to go to any of them if you don't want to. No, I, no. I want to hear Rich and I want to hear yeah. Julie. Yeah, so no, but we'll we'll be okay. fine. We'll be fine. Okay, it's it is good to have you guys there, but I don't want to make you feel like that you have other things to do. Yes, but anyway, okay. so you know, I don't I I wouldn't worry about numbers. Um, but I would, you know, even if you reach five people, you know, and you answer some questions, and mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, and we this time we did it in March. Maybe next time we do it, we experiment with a different time of year. You know? I think March is great. Yeah, because afterwards people start thinking of kayaking, right, right, so sculling, yeah. biking, yeah. Yeah. you know, and so you know we we can debrief that. But yeah. I think it went okay. I don't think any, yeah. no, no disasters happened. No, no, no it, it went good. Uh, my only observation that I saw that something went wrong was me. I was scared to death when I walked in because I walked over to the Council on Aging just to see which room it was in. And I look up on their screen there, and mm -hmm. it says the presentation started at 10. Oh. And I got there, you know, oh. at 10 and 11, I go, crap, I missed <laughs> the whole meeting. And then, you know. No, that was a <laughs> misprint on their part. So I, I didn't even know that, but you know, well, I, mean, I hope that didn't scare people away. It didn't because on their website, you know, when they put out their yeah. newsletter, uh, it had eleven o'clock. Yeah, which this is, says eleven. So, yeah, so yeah. I, that's what yeah. I went by. Yeah. So anyway, okay. I, I, we got three more to go. We don't have to do the re the, the next three. We mm -hmm. just are there as so support welcome. and answer questions and. And it will be interesting to see what kind of attendance we get. Yeah. Well, I, the two of the guys that were there on Tuesday said they were coming back. Um, That's the, the guy with the dog, he's coming back. Oh, Patrick. Yeah. 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 And, uh, but anyway, we'll see. We'll see. You know, Lori, the, Lori will come back. Mm -hmm. Lori, you know, yeah. Yeah, she Lori. talked to, to my wife and I afterwards, so she had a lot of Kooky, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, something we might want to consider, and I only mean consider, mm -hmm. uh, when you look at providing a service to people, I've gone over there to get help with Medicare mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, Social Security yep, and yep. stuff like that for an elderly parent. And they've been very good. So, so they've actually got people who come in on a regular basis yep. to help with that. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying we should do something like that. I'm saying we should maybe think about how to make it easier for people to come in. Low income people that are having a tough time paying their they, bills. They do do that. They do do that. Yes. There, yes. The, the Council on Aging has somebody okay. who will walk you through the Lee they do. EAP thing, Fantastic. you know, and help you fill out that out. Like a navigator, you know, they help would, you. Would they also help guide you as far as understanding your electric bill like you did with one of the people I there? don't think they do that. Yeah, I doubt um, it, but, but, you know, we that's something that we could do, you know, we could have a... Or provide the council yeah. agent so that they understand how to read the electric bill so that yeah. somebody came in, they right. might be able to give a little bit yeah. of Yeah, I mean, it's all on the Cape Light Compact website. They have a very well you know, A, B, C, D, this is what this is, this is what that is, this is what this is, you know, so, um, but, you know, just, but again, we could, I could talk to Council on Aging and say, you know, here's an, you know, if people come in confused about their electric bill over and above trying to get it subsidized somehow, you know, don't forget, you can go to this website and it will explain all the different parts of the bill. I think people were a little shocked that, out of their whole bill, they only controlled this little teeny bit of it. Yeah. So anyway, 
-hmm. I think it was fine. We'll see what the rest of them do. Um, and again, I don't think we should think about um, any more interview topics until we're done with March. You know, let's get through this. And then if we want, if there are others, like what, other things that we want to do, let's do them. No, Council Energy is already doing something yeah. like that. Yeah. And I think that's great. Yeah. I, I was in the word that they were. Yeah. So I had a meeting yesterday with Joe Powers. Um, I'm down on number new business now. Yeah. I had a meeting yesterday with Joe Powers. And they put in the application for the charging stations to Eversource. Eversource came back and you know, had a few suggestions. The area that we had originally thought would be a good spot, they said wasn't as good spot, but a different place in schoolhouse parking lot. Still the same parking lot, but they wanted to move it to a different place. But here is the, the so we get called in to Joe and we're trying to get them to understand that I do not have the expert, I don't have an, engineering degree. I, I am not an electrical engineer. I, I cannot prepare a site plan for <laughs> charging station, um, nor do I want to. Uh, so they are, they understand now that they need to hire somebody to do this. The they, town, the they town needs to hire somebody to do this. And so uh, baby steps. So what they're going to do is the, the company that we already made contact with, that Evcon company, mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. are local, they live here. I mean, they, they're Harwich residents. Mm -hmm. um, so they're going to get in touch with them mm -hmm. and just for the, because um, Eversource is looking for a site plan, you know, with the new location of the, mm -hmm. and so Evcon is able to do that. I mean, that's what they do. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to come up with a way to get, um, that done as quickly as they can. The problem that towns have, of course, is that whenever you're talking about spending money, there are really strict rules and regulations on how you spend money. You don't just mm -hmm. decide because when you're a private company, you do whatever you want, but when you're a town, you don't. Um, they, Joe felt pretty confident that he wouldn't have to go out for bid on this particular part, mm -hmm. just getting the site plan done, mm -hmm. that it could be, um, and so it could go quicker. Mm -hmm. Now, ultimately, once we get Eversource to approve that, yeah, that's a good spot, let, we can do that, then we will have to have an RFP that will have to go out for somebody to come in and actually build that's, the charging that's stations. That's the bidding? Pardon? The RFP is the bidding? The I bidding, don't know what right. it stands right. for. So mm -hmm. let's suppose this town decides to do four charging stations. Let's just use that as our... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then we, we need four charging stations in this location. Mm -hmm. We could put a bid out there. Who, mm -hmm. who can do that for us? And mm -hmm. how much are you going to charge us to mm -hmm. do that? Mm -hmm. The tricky part to this is, let's suppose it comes, I think we've talked about this before, if it comes out to like a $100,000, I'm just using that as a, it's probably mm -hmm. going to be more, but let's suppose it comes out to $100,000. The town has to encumber the $100,000, which means it would have to go on a warrant article. Mm -hmm. And it would have to go through the finance committee, mm -hmm. which means we've missed the spring yes, already, right. mm -hmm. you know, yeah, which means the fastest we could do this would be the fall, mm -hmm. you know, which is fine, you know. Well. But what the town has to believe in is that even though the money gets encumbered, we will never spend that much money because there's grants out there. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that somebody mm -hmm. like an Evcon, and maybe there are some other companies out there who do mm -hmm. the same thing that might do it for cheaper. Right. I don't right. know, right. you know, that's what an RFP is for. Yeah. Um, they also, part of that RFP was to be make sure that they are equipped to pursue all the grant opportunities. Oh, oh. that's so interesting. So part of their <laughs> job is to go get those grants to offset Come the with cost. the money yeah. and the ability to do the job. Right, right. Oh, so that's oh. fantastic. So we're hoping yeah, that... Yeah, 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 I like that. You know, so they would, get, they would get a chunk of the money. I mean, whatever company gets the bid, right. you know, whatever they bid, they're going to also include their part of it. I mean, they're going to have to make money on it. Mm -hmm. Right, they're not... But... 
they will also make sure that they keep the costs, they, that we get as much grant money as possible. Mm. Yeah, you're right. It gets complicated. Yeah, because we <laughs> look how it took us freaking forever to get this one little application into Eversource, and that yeah. was a one pager. Yeah. You know, these grants are like multi-page things. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, so that's the status. It's not, we're not, it's not forgotten. It is in process. It's just a slow process. And and Joe Powers has a secretary now dedicated to him. Yeah, well, so. I don't think that helps, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that well, should help. Yeah. So, so is it your feeling that the board of selectmen are on board with? I think so. I, th I I think so. I I think um, the only sticking point that I could see is just the funding. You know, to, you know, trying to make sure that you know the RFPs go out in a timely manner, that we get good quality responses. You know, and that when they write the RFP, they need to be they need to be detailed enough so that. They get back what they need, you know, as far as um, the information. Um, how does how does that tie in with? Um, you remember we way back, I think the meeting that Julie was at, we, mm -hmm. they talked about state grants. Is there's going to be state and local. There's going to be state and federal grants, specifically for EV charging, right. um, and uh, because we have those two big bills, that's why I can't wait for Julian Sear to get here because there's the Inflation Reduction Act, which was really right. a climate bill. Right. Um, but it has a ton of money for things like charging stations and well, yeah, e EV car right. rebates and that right. type of thing. And then Massachusetts passed their 2050 bill, which is you know net zero net by zero. 2050. Mm -hmm. Uh, which also includes money for EV cars and EV charging. Yeah, but I, I think what I'm asking about is that when we heard about grants, I remember Julie, I think, saying something about that we had missed the deadline. This is a rolling grant thing. So Eversource okay. gets money from the state okay. on a periodic basis. Right. They get like a certain ex money and they, they, they spend it down. Then they reapply, get another chunk of money, and then they spend it down. You know, so uh, that's that's an ongoing okay, kind so, of thing. So, yeah. So not being able to do things in a timely it won't way, matter. It won't matter. No, okay. no. Okay. There's so much money coming down the pike. You know. Good. We just want to be in line. We don't want to be at the end of the line. We want to be <laughs> towards the beginning of the line when that money starts to become uh, more available. And the good. I also Julie. Julie was at this meeting too with Joe. And um, oh, good. Um, so she's still got our back, and she's still working on it. And um, would you say Julie is sensitive to environmental issues, or she is kind of indifferent? I, I don't know. You know, I, my hope after living here for all these years and being on this committee for a very, very long time, um, my sense is that Harwich is not a very progressive town. Harwich is a really. <laughs> <laughs> Harwich is a, is a pretty conservative oh, yeah. town. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. You know, yeah. and so I, they are not like Wellfleet, you know, yeah. which yeah. that or Falmouth, yeah, which oh, are God. totally, you know, like yeah. let's do everything right yeah. now, and mm -hmm. you know they get yeah. and, and the citizens support them, and you know all of that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, we are we are not that. Mm. So okay. generally speaking, Cape Cod is fairly progressive. It's just that there's sort of little. Areas that to are be lot, honest with like you, um, uh, we have more Republicans on the Cape than most other areas in Massachusetts. Mm. Remember, yeah. we got rich people. Yeah. You know, so yeah, we when the rest of the state votes Democratic, we. Well, I came from Western Mass, so I know that it's like a totally different state down there than. Yeah. You know, yeah. East, yeah. So, but the but I don't think that they are against any of this. I, I they're just they put fiscal mm. issues, like if they had to choose between spending more money and doing an environmental thing, you know, it would be a because it took us two rounds to get it to be green community. Mm -hmm. They shot us down the first time. Mm. Didn't want anything to do with it. Mm. Um, it took us going back a second time mm. to really cinch the deal. And look how long it's took. It's took. It's taken <laughs> to, to get from board of selectmen to select board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And finally, yeah. it's on the yeah. ballot. Mm. So, yeah, it's ridiculous. I'm not saying they're against things. I'm just saying that they're cautious. Mm. They're cautious. 
when yeah. it comes to stuff well, like that. Well, it could that. be simply resistance to change. That's very resistance human. Resistance to change. I also think that the town, and I've said this before, um, and it's not just, I don't think it's just Harwich. These little towns down here have small government. You know, mm -hmm. there's not very many people in the town hall. Mm -hmm. The selectmen are part-time. Mm -hmm. um, and yet, they have to deal with all the issues that are coming up. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you have all the regular issues, mm -hmm. housing and, and sewering and, mm -hmm. and blah, blah, blah. And now we're overlaying that with climate and mm -hmm. resilience. And, mm -hmm. and it's like, there's just so much bandwidth out there, yes. you know, in the government. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, they just don't have, so that, you know, people mm -hmm. like us are kind of there to try to make up the the gap a little bit, uh, but it's it's not the same. Like I said, Barnesville hired a whole person to do this. They're on the payroll, yeah. mm -hmm. and that's what they do. You know, they mm -hmm. do all climate and all that kind of stuff. And Harvard is just not big enough for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But anyway, so. Okay. Uh, Glenn, did, did you finally go to a CVEC meeting? I didn't go to a CVEC meeting, but I did go and sit for an hour with Maria. Oh, good. Well, that's just that's even better. That was better. Well, yeah. I, I think it was better. <laughs> Although I still ha don't have a complete understanding mm -hmm. of everything. Yeah. You know. How familiar are you? I know, Valerie, you are. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with CVEC? Well, we had Maria came that one time. Yeah, but uh, okay. her uh, speech you know, was impenetrable to me. Okay. Too many acronyms. And things. Well, then I'll give you five minutes kind of explaining what I got out of the mm -hmm. presentation she gave to me, mm -hmm. and then specifically what we want to work on okay. here. Mm -hmm. so, so she just gave me a lot of presentations. So I've got the annual report, the fiscal report for 2022, and just a primer on really what CVEC is. And then I got some financials for the actual landfill down mm -hmm. here too. So, and I know Valerie's on top of all of this. So uh, uh, CVEC, you know, th their job is to develop, you know, the goals and objectives for renewable electric generation and facilities and procuring and or selling long-term electric supply or other energy-related goods or services, including renewable energy, certificate contracts at competitive prices to member communities and consumers within member communities. So essentially, they're kind of like a clearinghouse. We're kind of pulling all the stuff together. Mm -hmm. There's really only one person. Now, she does have someone who comes in once a week to help out with paperwork and whatnot, mm -hmm. but. Uh, but it's essentially a, a one-person show down there. Mm -hmm. So, so w if a town wants to do something, they would approach CVEC, mm -hmm. and CVEC then kind of puts together the paperwork. You have to do some of the paperwork yourself, mm -hmm. but then they'll put us in the queue. So, if there's a phase, right now, I think they're looking at phase six. Yep. Okay. And there, and phase six was supposed to be going in in like 2021, but because of COVID and everything, everything is really backed up. And the other thing that she said that's causing the backup is supply side issues. So when you look at all the materials that are being used for photovoltaic devices, you know, for your solar panels, a lot of that stuff is coming from around the world. Mm -hmm. And it's really been held up, especially yeah. since you're seeing a, a big increase. In right, and particularly costs. if you're talking large scale projects, that's even... So, so a lot of these contractors out there that do this, are, are, are way behind on getting mm -hmm. their materials. So mm -hmm. it's not something that you can just say, I want to get this done, I want to install it by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. You can want as much as you want, but if you can't get the materials, you're not. Mm -hmm. So phase six, we were talking about taking that piece of property that we have down on Queen Anne Road. Yeah. And what she'd like, and I think are you and I have to sit down. Mm -hmm. I don't go back. I'm going to talk to her again. I just want to get a little right, bit right. more Right, right. Oh, absolutely. Details. Yeah. But that's not in phase six right now. Mm -hmm. But if we want it in in there, we need to get Joe to sign a letter to that extent. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't commit us to anything mm -hmm. other than we get our name in the queue. Right. So there's a letter that we have to coordinate and mm -hmm. get into to Maria so that we're now on that list of projects that are going to be considered for out in the future. So, so that's something that you and I, I, I think, need to right. sit down, because I've never sat down with Joe. Um, you know what would be great when you go back to talk to Maria? Is, is there like a um, model letter? Well, there is, mm -hmm. and I called her, and she said she was going to email that to me, and, and I didn't get it yesterday yeah, well, when I called Eventually, her. though, she will so, give so you one. I'll get yeah. it, and I do have some model 
wording in what you gave. Mm -hmm. so Good. What, what do you mean by phase six? They've gone through multiple, just like any set of projects. You start with phase one, two, three, and, and over the years, and CVEC has been uh, in business since 2007, mm -hmm. so they've already gone through phase one, two, three, four, and five. So when you look at our transfer station down here, mm -hmm. that's got that project, you know, was, and I was waiting for somebody to ask, how many solar panels do we have down there? How many do we have? I have no idea. 14,000. <laughs> 14, 14, very good. Or 15,000. Very good. It's like 15,490, something like there's a, that. There's a sign at yes. the dump that, yeah. 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 And that morning, I went to picture to that sign. So when that guy asked, oh, when was that built? I just taken that picture and I go, 2014. And I just done that that morning. <laughs> You were just so, so nope. smart, yeah. Nope, I just know enough to get some information in case these questions are asked. So, but I I wonder. Uh, remember that um, CVEC meeting that we attended like uh, two months ago, mm -hmm. and she had this company from uh, somewhere in uh, in in Massachusetts. She was introducing this company. I don't remember the name of the company. Do you know battery? what I'm... Is this for batteries? Uh, no, I'm talking about CVEC. Mm -hmm. We at, you and I attended a presentation where Maria was yeah. introducing a company who could do things for us here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What was and, the and name? I, asked, I, for, I don't even remember. Um, you don't remember the no, name of the company? I, I don't remember the name of the company, um, but I think... I think what, she, what Maria was trying to say is that the towns are not obligated to go through CVEC. Yeah, but do you ask what, what I ask myself, what is the advantage to us to go through CVEC? Because they have the knowledge and expertise right. in doing this over and, they're not and profit. over and over again. Yeah, yeah they, they but this company that she was introducing could do it for us. I know. Without going through CVEC. But, but they're yeah. a for-profit company. CVEC's non-profit. CVEC is like Cape Lake Compact. They, they don't take, you know, they, they only take enough money to cover the... Yeah, you're not losing any money really at yeah. all by going through CVEC. Right. Really? When, yeah. when you see something like that, when they're offering up and there's only one person doing it for the whole Cape, mm -hmm. that's a lot of bang for your buck right there. They're like okay. a clearing house, yeah. okay. you know, to go through. So okay. when I look at somebody like them, you know, I, I used to and they don't do the work. They, she, I know they yeah, don't do yeah. the work. Yeah. They, they represent the whole Cape. And right. she said to you, mm -hmm. well, you always win because you're bundling up. Those were her words. And, Some and, of the and, projects, yeah, yeah. have and been bundled. Yeah. And, and, and anything like that. If you're buying cars for, for the city of Harwich, mm -hmm. and if I can buy 50 cars, mm -hmm. I'm going to get a little better deal mm -hmm. than I'm going to get buying one car. Okay. Mm -hmm. you know, okay. So, so yeah. when they bundle, and they've got yeah. six and that, projects. Yeah, and, okay. and that's what she, that's what CVEC does. I mean, mm -hmm. we will, you know, Harwich submits something, Chatham submits mm -hmm. something, Falmouth yeah. submits something, yeah. and they look at all the projects and they say, mm -hmm. how can we put these together okay. to get the biggest? So we'll we'll find a contractor that's mm -hmm. willing to do all those projects, yeah. okay. and they're going to give us a good price it, because it's and, and if I'm a contractor, I'm going to offer you a good price because I'm going to mobilize, I don't know, I, I'm going to mobilize 20 guys to build mm. all this stuff. Right. And I'm going to have a schedule that's laid out, and I'm going to go from this town to this town to this town, mm -hmm. or I'll have overlapping right. stuff. So right. if I have to put in all these concrete piers, I could do it at five locations, and then the guys who come in and, and bring in the panels mm -hmm. would all come in after that. So if they're going from this town to this town to this town, Mm -hmm. You're going to be able to get it done a lot quicker mm -hmm. because you've got somebody who's bringing in the team to take care of multiple right. projects. Right. Okay, so CVEC so. is your best. It's not. We are not obligated mm -hmm. to use CVEC, right. and there have been projects in other towns that they've done without CVEC, but mm -hmm. we're not obligated to that. Okay, but it, it does usually work to our advantage. Mm -hmm. And the difference between the Cape Light Compact and CVEC. Uh, uh, CVEC and the Cape Light Compact are separate public entities. The Compact is a member of CVEC. CVEC was formed out of a strategic planning process commissioned and undertaken by the Compact because the Compact wanted to stabilize electric rates for all its members and ratepayers with renewable energy generation. Uh, the Cape Light Compact birthed CVEC. Gave mm. them the the mm. seed money to begin, mm. but then be you know then separated so mm. that they work independently. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. In yeah, accordance yeah. with its goals, as of September 30, 2014, so there's you know mm -hmm. that's 2014. Mm. CVEC has developed over 27 megawatts of renewable energy. Mm. That's a lot. Mm. You know, I'm very impressed when mm. I when I came here. You know, now mm. I rolled this out that 
number one, that you can get all these towns to work together. Mm. I don't see that anywhere. <laughs> I, even with a company, trying to get three departments to work together is like mm. pulling yeah. teeth. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'm mm. impressed that You're right. they were able to get something like that done here. Mm. Yeah. So, so anyway, that's just a, a yep. primer sheet on, on yep. really what yep. it is. Mm. And just a couple of things that I pulled out from in here. You know, th this is from her desk. As a member focused electric cooperative, CBEC acts as a procurement resource and project manage management administrator. Mm -hmm. So, well, once again, they're the nexus that, that mm -hmm. kind of coordinates mm -hmm. going out and getting mm -hmm. the contract mm -hmm. and performs like an energy aggregator by buying and distri distributing the value of energy to its members and participants. Mm -hmm. So, once again, you know, they're just acting as that one focal point for all mm -hmm. the towns. Mm -hmm. uh, I hear you, yeah. Let's see what else did she have to say. During fiscal year 2022, CBEC addressed operational issues resulting primarily from post-pandemic inflationary impacts, solar photovoltaic supply chain issues affect, this is what I said earlier, is the right. fact that they're not able to get all this material right now. And I, I'm going to say that, you know, if you read the newspapers and you see what's going on in China, you never know how mm. politics affects supply chain stuff, but mm -hmm. it can, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know that could put a kibosh on a lot of projects that mm -hmm. you know as a town you're not going to have control over. CVEC won't either. So, right. so when you do go out to bid for some mm -hmm. of these things, mm -hmm. you're going to find that when people provide proposals in the old days, if if I was working with our cost people to develop an RFP and get a contract. You know, you would have a very specific schedule, and mm -hmm. you would say that you need to go on service by this date. You're going to see contractors saying, "I'm not going to commit to that because right. I have no idea." Right. You know, right. It used to be penalties if you didn't meet a certain or, benchmark. Or, or by bonuses, yeah. if you came in early. Exactly. exactly. You know, but that's and, all gone and, now. And, and now yeah. these guys can't do any of that because, yeah. just because of supply side stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Okay. So I I think that. Um, no, they do. They also have a website that you can go to and look at mm -hmm. stuff. And they have um, uh, on the website you can go to historical. Sunlight's in my eyes. Uh, you can go, and they'll have a list of all the towns, and then all the mm -hmm. projects that they've done in those towns, and you know, blah blah blah. So mm -hmm. you can go back and take a look at that. Mm -hmm. um, for us, um, I personally, you know, put put the community solar thing out there um, it doesn't have to be the the only project or or the project I mean it, it, we could look at other well, things but I, I, I um, like the idea and, and I'm not gonna I, yeah I'm not I think all of that's available yeah, you I'm know. not gonna give you an annual report yeah but I could show you you know yeah. what we're getting from the from the landfill as far as the monies we get per month mm -hmm. and you know, we're, we're mm -hmm. getting thirty-four thousand dollars a mm -hmm. month for that, yeah. <clears throat> which is a nice <clears throat> chunk of change. It's a nice, nice chunk of change. I mean, that, mm -hmm. I look at a project like that and I go, you know, whoever came up with that idea deserves a pat on the back. Mm -hmm. But as far as putting in this mm -hmm. this facility on Queen Anne, in previous meetings, I he heard people bring up yep. the idea of providing this to low-income consumers. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's where I think maybe we should sit as a team yep. and come up with a, exactly what we want this to do and mm -hmm. say. Right. So, so if we're looking at this to be something to provide the people of Harwich, you know, below a certain income. Mm -hmm. I don't know how we do that. That's my my area of yeah. expertise. I, I think yeah. it's a great idea. Yeah. I mean, it, it would be nice if we could target a specific group of people. I'm not sure how realistic that is. I don't know how you could do it legally. Right. But I like the concept. Yeah. The fact that you're, you're providing a value, mm -hmm. and especially when you're looking at real estate prices and having uh, housing for low-income mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. this is one of those things that if we can't provide the housing. You're still providing a mechanism to control cost to a mm -hmm. certain extent right. that the town could could sell. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, it's not going to help people when you when you don't have any housing here. But but even a renter pays an electric bill, you know, and so that's a way that a renter could yeah. take advantage of solar right. and reduce their energy costs. Right. Mm -hmm. But but I liked the idea, and I I forgot who brought it up. I think it was you, Rosanna. Mm -hmm. You know, to, to have this go to yeah. you know for low income yeah. customers. Yeah. But. I think maybe we should work on what it is yeah. we want to sell. I'll try to get um, either Megan or or um, 
Lindsay from uh, Cape and Island Self Reliance because they they administer a community solar program, right? And so they've been doing this for a while, mm -hmm. um, and and maybe one one of our meetings they can come in and just give us an overview mm -hmm. of of how community solar works, you know, that and how they great. they've yeah. been doing I, it. I need you that know. bit of education. And um, <laughs> mm -hmm. and and we can also continue. And Marie, I think you know you can talk to her too, you know, and say you know she might have some ideas about like how do you target your audience? Because these would be off takers, you know. We would have a solar farm where a, a a company would build the farm. They would take advantage of the, the, the racks and the tax advantages, and that's how they make their money back. Mm -hmm. And then they would sell the electricity at a discount. And that's all in here. Yeah. What, that's just a form of contract that yeah. CVEC does. They have a, a mm -hmm. lease agreement yeah. between the developer and the property owner, yeah. so that would be the town of Harwich. Yeah. They've got a power purchase agreement between CVEC and the developer yeah. who comes in and builds it. Right. And then they have an intergovernmental power sales agreement between CVEC mm -hmm. and the host, which would be right. the town of Harlech. Right. Yeah. You know, so, so they do have those type right. of, of right. contracts. Yeah. Now, let me ask you, uh, I should know the answers because I live right on, on the golf course, but at Cranberry Valley, uh, they put in solar panels yep. for their carts right. and additional solar panels that weren't on the barn right. itself. But but freestanding ones. What was the understanding when they put those in? Was that electricity supposed to be going? I, I know they were going to use it to charge the cars. Mm -hmm. And to and, run the building. And Okay, is mm -hmm. that all pretty much? That's it, all pretty much that it does. So, so there's yeah. not anything really uh, to speak of going on the grid. I don't it, think it's so. It's just reducing yeah. the cost exactly. for, for running the golf course. Right, right. Which, once again, is owned by the right. town of Harwich. Right, so, so it's so good news, you know. Mm -hmm. Can I, I, we, we can get that letter mm -hmm. that we sent mm -hmm. to just by that. Okay, so you were our the town of Harwich's representative. For CVEC. For CVEC. So all the other towns mm -hmm. have... Correct. How often do you guys meet? Quarterly? Uh, I want to say it's twice a year. Is it twice a year or four times a year? Twice a year? Uh, anyway, not every month. Yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah it's not every yeah. month. No, but I, I, I guess for me, I always think about pooling resources and maybe if some of the things, the questions you're asking or the issues you're, you're grappling with, maybe there are other representatives from other towns who have dealt with that and maybe there's a way that you, know, you can... I have a list of all the contacts. Mm -hmm. I, I do have that here for yeah. each town. Yeah, you know, but I would start with Maria only because she's yeah. worked with each one yeah. of them. Yeah. Right. So yeah. she I do not believe a single town on the Cape has done community solar. Um, I think the community solar that self-reliance administers, they are, that's off Cape, the, 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 the solar farms are off Cape, mm -hmm. and they're just administering, yeah, yeah. So we might be, if, if we did it, we might be the first. The ground you know. drinkers. Conservative right. Are you about to close? We, we're getting close. I, Glenn, oh, yeah. thank you. Yeah, and, and you and I probably do need to, if you get that form letter, um, you know, we'll, we'll sit down and, you know, sort of figure out what it, what it should say. Um, because then what Marie would do is see if there's any interest out there from a company that builds solar farms to doing this. Now, the, as I told you before, one of the drawbacks is that it's partially wooded, the site. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it would require taking trees down mm -hmm. to build the solar farm. Mm -hmm. It's not totally wooded. It's partially wooded. But it would, ha you know, in order for a contractor to be at all interested in it, it would have to, they'd have to be able to build it maximum, you know, like use up all the space mm -hmm. that, that's there. Yeah. Um, the last time I talked to the town, there was some... Julie said that the town might be willing to have their highway department go in and clear, you know, what needs to be cleared, you know, to make it. But we're not. We would never do that unless we actually had a contract with somebody. You know, yeah, I'd, I'd be I'd be really interested in knowing specifically what mm -hmm. you're talking about. Mm -hmm. 
you know, how many, how many. Right. Because yeah. I, I mean, I just remember the whole thing with Joy Base Cape Cod. Mm -hmm. 140 acres of trees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I know it would be and the carbon that. absorption that they, yeah. they would do. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's that's my concern about right. taking any trees yep. down. Yep. But and that was that was one of the you know so that would be an issue that we would you know you can maybe you know Maria would have some input on that you know mm -hmm. does she think that that's a that's a um, deal breaker like yeah. if if we yeah. um, if it is then we have a piece of, and Julie said the town will not change that. They're not going to change it for any other land. Mm -hmm. And change. one of the things I asked Julie, I said, if, if this particular piece of land that has been voted in as an as of right, mm -hmm. you know, specifically for this type of project, mm -hmm. if it turns out that nobody wants it, <laughs> I asked Julie, I said, would the town be willing to designate some other place that maybe is already cleared, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and she said, absolutely not. This was approved by town meeting, and this is what we have, you know, and we either make it work or we don't. There's not that many trees. The trees that are there are scruffy, you know, pitch pines. They're not that carbon absorbing. Mm -hmm. I mean, they do absorb carbon, but they're, you yeah. know. Yeah, um, yeah. It's you know, a so of it, it, yeah, it's a matter of degree, and that's something we would have to flesh out once mm -hmm. You know, if we ever had anybody interested in it and we were able to walk the property with a contractor, mm -hmm. you know, and to see, okay, do, what do you think? You know, mm -hmm. do, do, like, what would have to be done here? Mm -hmm. But that's that's another step. Mm -hmm. That's another step. So, yeah, keep us posted if you do get that, you know, model letter. Um, Before we adjourn, I would like to ask if you would be interested in uh, putting this topic uh, for our next meeting agenda. Um, I attended, in part only, the uh, 350 Cape Cod uh, Zoom meeting. Uh -huh. and, uh, and I'm reading to you what I would like to suggest we talk about. To encourage adoption in each town of the new, quote, specialized opt-in energy efficiency building code, which was authorized by the state's 2021 mm -hmm. Climate mm -hmm. Roadmap Act and is now officially available for adoption by town meetings. Well, I, I, I've thought of that. Um, I think we might want to ask our building inspector mm -hmm. to come in mm -hmm. to one of our meetings mm -hmm. to explain, to kind of give us their take, because they're, they're aware of it. Julie was talking about it. Mm -hmm. You know, she said, oh, dear. Forget. The Seeger, Siegler, Siegler, yeah, the I guy that the, the, the guy that came already from the Sean department. Libby? No, 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 no. Sean Libby did come. He's not the building okay. inspector. Um, he, there was a guy who who came here. Ah, but no, he wasn't the building. No, he wasn't inspector. building inspector. No. So the building inspector, he's the person who the town looks to mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to code. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. he is the art. He enforces the code mm -hmm. in the town. Mm -hmm. So if you're building something, he has to go to your site. He has to look at what you've done and deem yay, nay. You mm -hmm. followed the code. You didn't follow the code. Yeah. Um, I know that when the stretch code first came out, all the contractors were like, oh, my God, we could never do that. You know, too Resistance. expensive. Nobody will buy the houses, you know, blah, blah, Resistance, blah. Resistance, So there is, you know, and I don't know if that resistance is still as, I'm sure the, there is still some yeah. or a lot. <laughs> yeah, but but the first step I think would be getting the building inspector to come and talk to us about mm. where he feels mm. we are. Mm. Um, if he is the, if he is amenable to, uh, if he wouldn't get in our way, mm. if we wanted to promote it, mm. and he would mm. not support oppose us. us mm -hmm. Um, then it might be something we could do for one of the future, you know, mm -hmm. town uh, meetings. Yeah. Hillary, don't, yeah. don't you think we could outline what the high points are of the, of the new code so that we're all cognizant of it? So well, I'm, I'm sure he is. You know, it's been it's been put out to all the building departments for a while now, and I'm and since 2021. Yeah, they're well aware of the codes, um, but the building inspectors are well aware of the codes. 
but the, the, just the word code sounds uh, kind of nebulous. We need to a- identify exactly what it is, the points that, that it's going to bring up. What, what is the HER is going to go from? What, what is it now? And what does this mean from a hardware standpoint? Right. Well, I, again, Charlie, I, the building inspectors do have all of that information. And it's, it's on the web, you know, you can go on the website and look, and it has all of that information. If you just Google, you know, new building stretch codes, Massachusetts, it pops up. Um, so you're suggesting that we translate this into inviting the that's building? What, that would be the first step, I think, okay. to sort of test the water. Let's mm. see, because remember we talked about this very conservative town. Mm. Um, and I don't want to put a lot of, I don't want to get a, pissing contest with the building department you know i mean i i'd I'd like to make everybody on the same page and you know and that would give us a chance to sort of state what we think it's important of course Mm -hmm. you know well making progress yeah you know for and and have an ally you know i would think that the only pushback he would have you know if he's not a politician he's Mm -hmm. just the building right the only pushback i could see him having because when i go on the town website I think they've had positions open for the oh. building department. A lot of departments have openings because yeah. it's hard to fill positions. But when you see that, that means he's stretched. Mm-hmm. So if you have, quote, new stretch codes, yeah. <laughs> will it make his job harder? Mm-hmm. That requires more right. man hours from right. his department. Right. That's the only thing I can see why right. he would not like it because right. it makes his job harder. And mm-hmm. because we are a green community, mm-hmm. we were already mandated to go to the level one stretch code. Mm-hmm. Now, that is adopt in. If you want to go really into it, you have to adopt it. As a green community, we already are obligated to a certain level of, of the new mm-hmm. code. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe he would think that good enough. You know, we're already, you know, doing. Do you want to have him at our next meeting? Is that, um, is that too fast? No, I think. Probably would be good to have them. It would probably take a few months to get them, yeah. like it did with Sean Libby. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, the I will. Papers? I will find out who he is. Tell you what, I'll take care of that. Okay, good. Find out who he is. If you have the time to drop in and say hi, you know that that would be good. I'd be happy to do that. And um, just tell him kind of what we're thinking about, mm-hmm. and um, we'd like him to come in and talk to us about the well. We, what he, what we really would need to know is if he could come in and sort of enlighten us on the code that we're already obligated to do because we are a green community. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's you know, super how, important. How is that going? Yeah. And then, you know, you can let him know that we're interested in his, mm-hmm. his opinion of the opt-in code. And when can he meet with us? And, you know, we meet what is it, the second th- Thursday, third, yeah. second Thursday of every month, mm-hmm. um, you know, could he do one of those? Mm-hmm. Say, so Glenn will take care of that. Yeah, I think that's a, you know, that's a, that a lot of, and some towns are adopting that. I mean, I know Wellfleet is gung-ho, and they're already trying to get it on their um, town warrant and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, so, like, so far. Yeah. Well, what? Just give me a specific example of what is in that stretch code. I mean, is it insulation, is it types of windows? Is the HERS rating will go up. Um, yeah. The It'll be um, zero carbon, so you won't be able to install like a gas cooking stove or anything like that. Is that the, but what's in the green community? Oh, oh, you don't know. I that. don't, I don't okay, know but all the stre- of it. But the stretch one is stuff like that. Yeah. So it yeah. would be zero carbon. Right. And it's got nothing to do with the materials being zero carbon it has to do with operating the house after yes the it's, it's mainly the hers rating okay. increases and it has to be ev charger ready okay. which means you have to install the 220 line for mm-hmm. an ev charger you don't have to ins- you don't have to provide the charger you have to have it so that if the person the who buys the house it. has a place to put the charger the hook up yeah yeah mm-hmm. see that's a great example right there. yeah you know, I can watch it yeah. and say, that's going to cost me as a builder, you know, to put in the garage, it's going to cost right. me $500 to right. run the cable. Right. Mm-hmm. But you're going to have to put in the 220 anyway, because they're going to, if you're going to have a net, if you have a low carb house, carbon house, they're, they're not, they're not going to have gas anything. Yeah. Um, so you're going to have to have the 220 for their heat dryer pump. and their stove, you know, so you might, you're going to have 220 anyway, so you might do, as well put in one for the charge. Do heat pumps need 220? I don't know. 
uh, heat pumps, do they need 220? Yes. yes. If it's okay, a whole house heat pump. But your house is 220. The, yeah. the only yeah. question is, is, is do you have a 200 amp service so that right. you, know, you have a generator and all these air conditioners right. and you're running right. all this stuff, right. then you need 200 amp service down. Well, right. right. Well, and so that, that's the kind of thing that builders yeah. have to think about now, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I, I, I needed to kind of adjust, but it wasn't a big deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's a good idea. So if you get back to us on that, um, I don't know if any of you saw this, but Saturday, June third, they're going to have the the annual uh, yeah, EV thing. Oh, yeah, I saw yeah. it. Yeah. I saw it in yeah. Hyannis. So, yeah. um, and this RechargeMassachusetts.org is a big organization that deals with promoting. And who finances that? Is it governmental? It's a it's a it's a nonprofit. Yeah. And I think they're supported non -profit? by nonprofit. Yeah. Where do they get their money? Uh, governmental. The, the government, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I heard about that. Yeah. They do yeah. it every June. Yeah. 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 One thing I'll say about EVs. Did, for your Tesla, did you get something back from the government because it was too expensive? They're trying to fix that in the new yeah. rebate. I'm sure it will be fixed. They're also looking to make it so that used electric vehicles can also, yeah. the people buying a used electric vehicle will be able to get, uh, I don't want to call it a rebate. I don't know what it's actually called. So it's but the used, the Tesla used is still outrageously expensive. Yeah. He's trying to, he's trying to fix that. <laughs> Who he? Yeah, Elon. Elon. He's reducing uh, the cost. Of course, yeah. of course, because he has been so stupid that yeah. he has to do something good. <laughs> he's not selling a lot of cars. So oh, yeah, he has now the steering wheels are falling so off. So. Oh, please. What? What? what did yeah, you, Teslas, yeah. now the steering wheels are falling off. They've had oh, a couple really? of Teslas where yeah. the steering wheels has come right yeah. off yeah. in oh. people's hands. And this one guy said, thank God he was on a straight stretch of road, so he was able to stop. Yeah, I heard a woman say that there, there was a bolt missing or something. Whatever. Yeah. You know. mm. yeah. They haven't yeah. had an official recall yet, mm. but they could be around the corner. Mm. Anything else that anybody? All right. So. Nope. So our next meeting is scheduled for April 13th. Is that okay as far as anybody can tell at this moment in time? Good with me. Now, it's one thing to think about. Um, I go back to work May 8th. So three o'clock meetings are not gonna be something I can do. So um, I'll, have to, I'll have to go back to the drawing board. How early can you meet? Uh, after oh, a work or day? How late? <laughs> yeah. I, you, you I mean, how. Days a week? I work five days, yeah. Okay. I don't know what my days off are. They change, mm -hmm. like all through the summer, depending on staffing and that type of thing. So I can't even say, well, I'll always have Wednesday off or I'll always have whatever off. Um, so we have some options. Um, Wait, when do you go back to work? May 8th. May 8th. So I don't know what day of the week is that? Um, it's a Monday, and our next our May meeting is scheduled for May 11th. Right. So I would not be able to be here for three o'clock. Mm -hmm. um, now, I get out of work at five, okay. so I could be here by you know five thirty. So that the would be great. one one option would be to have it at five thirty. That would be great. Um, is it okay with you? Sure. It's summer, so it's I mean, light out, you yeah, know, so, I no with yeah, that. I just have to yeah, change it yeah, there. so, um, okay. so that would be, so what's at May 11, what's our, what's the date May of the, 11. May 11, and would the same thing be true for June, for, yeah, June, July, August, September, October, uh, and then November, I'd be, I, I, I work from May through the end October. of October, yeah, yeah, so I should yeah. change June, also. yeah, so okay. change June, and so 5.30, is that 5.30 going to work for you? Yeah. 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 Now, it puts another wrinkle on our yeah. meeting because the building closes at 4. Yeah. So, in the so, no, because we have to meet where the okay. thing is. So what Barry used to do is he used to get the key cause, you know, and just... You know, because they'll give you a key in the office. Mm -hmm. So if and we keep it for good? No, you have to put it back in the box. Um, <laughs> I'll make a copy. <laughs> yeah. On the way out, you I'll can't do that. on the way out, I'll show you how it works. But so somebody would have to be designated. 
it doesn't have to be the same person every time. It yeah. can be, it could, but somebody has on Thursday morning or afternoon or sometime before four o'clock, mm -hmm. somebody would have to come to the mm -hmm. town hall and, and pick up the, the key. key. And we would all meet at the door at 5.30, open the door and come in. We used to meet at seven o'clock at night I mean, for years and years yeah. and years, but I don't really like seven o'clock. No. I would rather come straight from work here mm -hmm. and then when I'm home, I'm home. You know, I'm yeah. not going out again. Yeah. Um, and it's still light out in the summer, so it shouldn't be too. I could do old. May 11. Right. Pick up the key. Okay, oh. so so Jacqueline's going to get the. Okay. And if maybe if you could do June. And yeah. and and from where do I pick up the key? Uh, the um, in the office. Uh, the main office. The Ellen. Boris, the it, uh, where the select Danielle. Men, yeah, one of those people. I don't know which person is in charge yeah. of the key, but the uh, board what of was, selectmen. What was the name of the secretary? <laughs> The Board of <laughs> Selectmen's <laughs> office. Patience yeah. or something. Patience, maybe. No, she's. Patience is the name of the secretary. I think the secretary Patience is, powers? is Joe's secretary. Yeah, Patience. That's I right. thought that, that name was great. <laughs> Patience. Yeah. But I don't know if she's old, got the key. It might be the other. It's a very old. Ellen old Powell. Name. It may be. You know. Okay. Like, yeah. okay. Yeah. So, so okay, May, I'm, Jacqueline's going to get the key in from the May meeting. And the okay. June meeting, uh, Rosen, you can do that. And we'll, you know, we'll, talk we'll, about we'll, we'll go later. from there. You have the floor to start with? Yeah, I do. I, I enjoy it. Um, okay. the, um, what are you doing? I go back to being a park ranger. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. Nice. Fun. So what, what, do you, what does a park ranger do? do? Well, in, the, in May, the May and June, I mainly work with kids. I do like field oh, trips for fun. kids and, oh, you know, nature hikes and things like that. Wonderful. Mid-June, I stopped doing that. And then from mid-June till September, I'm a regular park ranger, which means I do kayak trips, canoe trips, Ooh. hikes, but for adults, you know, for, for visitors. Uh, and, and we that's also... A, that's, a, that's a job? It's a job. It's a paid job, and um, and we also have, all of us, all the rangers, have to do our a stint every week. We do several, you know, at the information desk, you know. Mm -hmm. So when people come in, you know, you with the park oh, map and all that kind of fun. stuff, that's you know. Fun. So oh, it is. I, lo I love the job. I mean, this is beautiful. my twenty seventh season. Where so where, where, where do you take the kayak course? Um, I do some in Salt Pond mm -hmm. and, and do Nosset Marsh, and then um, I do. I do, I don't do, I do, um, uh, yes, I do Great Island, yep. that area. Yeah, okay. And then I also do Meeting House Pond, Pleasant Bay. Mm. Um, Great Island and, and uh, Nosset Marsh are very tidal, so I can only go to high tide, so they're a little harder to schedule. Uh, Pleasant mm. Bay is, it at doesn't matter. At what time do you go? It depends on the tide. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. but I work from, like, like 8.30 to 5, you know, so I try to make sure it falls within my work day. You oh, know? I see. Okay, 8.30. <laughs> and you yeah. have to wear a cool uniform. Uh, I don't know if it's cool or not, but I do have to wear a uniform, yeah. Mm. Olive green, you know, pants and a gray shirt. Mm. Mm. I do yeah. have the Smokey the Bear hat, though. Well, do you yeah. have to buy that hat or do they give the hat? Oh, they give you all that stuff. They give it to yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get $240 a, a year Slightly uniform cool. allowance. Mm -hmm. I've been doing it for 27 years. I don't really need a lot of uniform stuff, but anyway, it's oh, fun. Sounds good. Yep. Terrific. Yeah. But every once in a while, you get you like stay, a, You stay with nature and make money yeah, and yeah. meet I people. I'm doing stuff I would like to do in the summer anyway, so, ah, and fantastic. somebody's paying me to do it. Oh Charlie, we're all done. Okay. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing you. Um, Check are you. Will you be here for our April meeting? Yes, I will. I'll be up there. Yay. Yay. All right. We'll see you then. Bye. Yeah, bye-bye.